Okay, the other type of uh, disorder, respiratory disorder, um, I'll talk about is a restrictive, uh, restrictive kind of respiratory disorder. Again, I'm just going to use one example just to give the idea and the concept behind this kind of disorders. The more serious, the more serious respiratory uh, or restrictive disorder will be um, discussed in critical care. But now I'm just going to give you an idea of what could happen regardless of the kind of respiratory disorder and how that restriction um, it, what does it cause? So, one, the example will talk about the pleural effusion. Now, uh, pleural effusion by definition is a uh, abnormal collection of fluids in the pleural space. Now, remember that y we have the, the lungs and they are surrounded by a visceral uh, pleural uh, cavity and then surrounded by the pleural cavity, sorry. In the pleural cavity, uh, there is a small amount of fluids, a series of fluids, that's ma its major function is to prevent the friction between the lungs and the, the inside of the pleura. Now, for some reason, these fluids become, uh, accumulates, and it, normally it's like 5 to 10 only. Now, when it accumulates, it will, of course, uh, leave less space for the lungs, as you see here, so the lung will not expand. Of course, when the lungs is not fully expanding, the amount of air that will enter the lungs for the gas exchange will be limited and as a result of that the gas exchange will be impaired. So this is the whole idea behind it. So whether it's cirrhosis, whether it's um, infection, uh, regardless of the type, uh, it's the same idea. It's restrict restricting the lungs from expanding and doing enough gas exchange. Now for in the case of a pulmonary a pleural effusion, it could be transudates and this is like pretty much like edema. It has to do with the filtration, has to do with the concentration of um, the difference in concentration between the blood and the cells. So uh, you will see it in um, chronic diseases like uh, chron um, congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, renal disease. It has to do with the fluid issues. The exudates on the other side, uh, it's more of inflammation as a result of um, some kind of infections or maybe cancer. Regardless, again, of the type, it's the same idea. It's less room for the lungs to expand. Now, the clinical manifestation as a result of that, as you know, think about it, again, you have less expansion, less gas exchange, so there will be hypoxia, and the patient may show symptoms of dyspnea. Now, the symptoms that the patient may show depends on the amount of the pleural effusion. Sometimes it's minor to the point that the patient does not show any kind of symptoms. If it's, if it's more, if it's significant, the patient will have be in severe dyspnea and so on. But that is the major classical um, or the classical manifestations in this case. Now, the other thing is, uh, if if the fluid is more of a cirrhosis, uh, sorry, is, is in more of an, a result of infection and inflammation, so the patient may show some symptoms of uh, infection as a result of that. Now, the management of this uh, condition is basically to. Uh, get rid of these uh, fluids and uh, we do that by, by aspiration. I will show you the procedure now. Now, as far as physical examination, there are some classical symptoms in this patient. Again, the patient may be asymptomatic if the amount is small, but uh, as you see, because of the uh, air, the, the air or the volume of air will be diminished, so we expect that the uh, breathing sound will be also diminished or even absent. And the other thing is when the lungs try to expand and if there will be a, some friction between the lungs and this fluid. So that's what we call, what, what we be, what we call it uh, pleural friction drops. And from the name, it's pleural, so it has to do really with the pleural. So this is a classical symptom. You only see it in the pleural effusion. Also, remember from percussion that when you percuss a f an organ that is filled with water or is surrounded by water or fluids, it will give you a dullness uh, sound. You know that normally the, re the uh, lungs, they do resonance, right? So in this case, you will see more of a dullness. So let's hear how it sounds to have a diminished heart uh, breathing sound. And this is how the plural rub sound. Okay. Now let's see the procedure of um, removing the uh, fluid from the plural space. And that's the first thing is that we need to confirm that by doing a chest x-ray. We talked about the idea of chest x-ray. As you see, here's a fluid surrounding the pleural cavity. And of course, 
um, we will need to know the history of the patient to confirm is this is a more of infiltration, is it an infection, or is more of pleural effusion. But the chest X-ray will show the pleural effusion, and then under guidance of CT scan or ultrasound, we can insert a needle and get rid of these fluids.